Hey guys, another, <laughs> parang parang siyong <laughs> another topic for intermediate accounting, which is compound financial instrument. Okay, so madali lang itong discussion na to kasi uh, about compound financial instruments lang siya. Okay, so ano pag-uusapan natin? We have yung overview ng ano ba yung financial instrument. Although, medyo late na yung discussion. Dapat siya na sa paunang part na starting point siya. And then, compound financial instruments. Kung ano ba talaga siya. If you're hearing my dog, I'm so sorry. Okay, it's very noisy. Okay, so ano ba ang financial instrument? According to PAS 32, it is a contract that gives rise to both a financial asset of one entity and financial liability or equity instrument of another entity. Okay, so parang two worlds. Ano, financial asset siya nung isa. Samantalang doon sa, di ba sabi sa transaction, dalawang ends yan. Yung kabilang end, financial asset niya, yung kabilang end ng transaction, is either financial liability niya or naging equity instrument niya. Okay, that's a financial instrument. Okay, so isa, isa siya, pero dalawa yung ends niya hindi ka siya yung kamik <laughs> okay so dalawa yung ends niya okay so it encompasses financial asset financial liability and an equity instrument okay so we have characteristics of a financial instrument so una there must be a contract daw okay then pangalawa dalawang parties sa contract okay Patatlo, yung contract, it explicitly tells you na magkakaroon, it will arise to a financial asset of one party and a financial liability or equity instrument of another party. Okay? So, yan. Al- alam ko naman, may obliquon na kayo. Okay? If wala pa, wala pa kayo dun sa part ng contract. Okay? Um, you may read in advance, Char. Okay, so, most of you, Okay, because this is intermediate accounting, I know sa syllabus natin is meron na kayong oblicon. So, you're familiar with contracts. Ano? So, yan. Okay? Examples of financial instruments. So, we have cash in the form of notes and coins. Okay? So, so ito, pag ikaw may pera, financial asset mo yon. Okay? Financial liability siya ng issuing government. Bakit? Kasi, may obligasyon yung government na siguraduhin that the money you are holding is recognized as a currency sa sa place mo. Okay? Na hindi siya pwedeng tanggihan. Nang, for example, bibili ka sa sa mall. Tapos, ang hawak mo is do, that issued currency ng Banko Sentral ng Pilipinas. Tapos, biglang may isang store sabi sa'yo, hindi po kami tumatanggap ng peso. What? You're in the Philippines? Hindi ka tumatanggap ng peso? My God! So, It's the duty of the government to make sure that the holders of the notes and coins that they are issuing, I, uh, they they are assured of their value. Ano so? Okay, so we have cash in the form of checks. So nakacheck eh. Pag check eh, financial asset asset siya ng payi. Okay, yung um yung tatanggap. Okay, so yung yung pay, pag ininkash niya, yung check eh, alam niyo may matatanggap siya. Okay? Financial liability siya ng drawer issuer. Bakit? Kasi dapat uh, manigurado itong si drawer or si issuer na hindi tatalbog yung check eh. Once magamit siya ni pay. Okay? So, yon Cash in bank. So, alam naman natin that when we deposit money sa banko, okay, that is actually us pinapahiram natin yung pera natin sa banko. Sa so, isipan kasi natin, nung hindi pa tayo nag-accountancy or hindi pa tayo nag-business course, pag nilalagay natin yung pera sa banko, safekeeping lang, akala natin naka-store lang siya sa so, isang malaking vault na puro gold bars. Ano, ganun yung sa movie, di ba? Okay, pero in reality, once we deposited, we created an account, we deposited our money there, okay, hindi siya nag stay put doon, ginagamit siya ng banko in, in other forms of investments, like for example, loans sa ibang tao na nangailangan, kasi the banks are financial institutions, okay, so, meron kang extra funds, 
binibigay mo sa kanila. Meron naman lumalapit sa kanilang mga tao na nangailangan ng funding. Okay, so they papahiram muna nila panandalian. And then the, the responsibility is, kapag pumindot ka sa ATM, at nag-withdraw ka lang, for example, 5,000 pesos, pumindot ka sa ATM, responsibilidad nila, maglalabas sila ng 5,000 pesos deducted sa account mo. Okay? Pag yan hindi nila ginawa, kasi sinabing, uh, ay, nasa pahiraman pa po, pero nyo, hindi pwede yon, Okay? Kasi sa, um, the bank is a depository bank. Okay? So, uh, yon, Okay? So, Sa mga hindi na, <laughs> ganun yung konsepto ah. Kaya di ba pag may bank account ka, nagugulat ka may mga 1 peso interest income, di ba? nag interest kasi pinapahiram nila yan sa ibang tao. Okay, subject to uh, demandability mo pag nagpindot ka sa ATM. Okay, so yan. Okay, trade accounts. You have financial assets siya ng seller. Okay, kasi AR, accounts receivable niya. And on the part of the customer na umutang, okay, on on account, okay, that's financial liability. Trade accounts eh. Okay? Next, we have um, notes and loans. That's a financial asset of the lender. Receivable niya kasi dumidilim mo. Kailangan ko na ng ring light chart. <laughs> okay, wala pang budget. Okay, so... Um, Financial asset of the lender, that's the receivable financial liability of the borrower. Okay, for the debt securities, we have financial asset of the investor and the financial liability of the issuer. And then equity securities, we have financial assets of the investor and the financial liability of the issuer. Okay, so we have financial liability kasi financial asset, financial liability, and equity instrument is focus on financial liability. It is a liability that is a contractual obligation. Una daw is to deliver cash and other financial asset to another entity, okay? And to exchange finance or in financial instruments with another entity under conditions that are potentially unfavorable, okay? So, we have trade accounts payable, notes payable, loans payable, and bonds payable. So, ano bang highlight dyan? To deliver cash and other financial assets. Okay? And then, to exchange financial instruments to another entity under circumstances that are potentially unfavorable. Mamba ka na naging unfavorable? Eh, magbabayad ka na ng utang eh. Okay? Magre-render ka ng obligation mo. Okay? So, uh, on your part, gagastos ka dyan. Gagastos ka dyan or uh, maglalabas ka ng financial assets bukod sa kung, kung wala kang cash, edi ibang financial assets. Okay? So, yun. So, anong pinagkaiba siya, niya sa non-financial asset? For example, the deferred revenue and warranty obligation. Um, bakit, ma'am? Kasi, dyan, uh, hindi ka maglalabas ng pera. Di ba, pag deferred revenue is parang parang uh, advance payment ng customer, hindi mo pa nire-render yung service. So, ang obligation mo dyan is to render service. Okay, hindi naman to render another form of, uh, to give the customer cash. Ano, eh, nagbigay na nga siya ng cash, cash advance. So, nasaan na yung aking hinihinging uh, deliver of services or goods? Okay, parang ano siya, um, gets na naman yan. Okay, then we have warranty obligation, ganun din. Okay, once you bought a product, okay, at sabi may warranty, at lumapit ka sa store, na pinagbilhan mo, sabi, sabi mo, itong laptop na ito, hindi na go on. Okay? Pasok pa naman sa warranty period, ano yung re-render nila service? It's either uh, rendering delivery of goods, again, papalta ng unit, or uh, i-repair -re nila yung unit, which is the service. Okay? So, yun. Income tax payable, non-financial liability siya because it is imposed by law and it is non-contractual. Okay, so, batas siya pag hindi ka nagbayad ng income tax. Sahabuin ka ng BIR tax evasion. Okay, sabi nga natin, pwedeng tax avoidance. Okay, kaya nga tayo nag-aaral ng taxation eh. Para, we can actually, we can actually advise our, pag naging CPA na kayo, or even if pag naging accountant na kayo, okay, um, we can advise our clients na nagpapatulong sa tax na pababain nga natin ang ating tax. Okay? 
the legal way. Okay? Huwag pupunta sa ano. Huwag pupunta sa impyerno. Okay? So, there there are um, there are provisions in the tax law that allows for options. Okay? Sa uh, tax payment. So, pag may options yung mga yung mga taxpayers natin, you, as an accountant, um, pwede ka mag-analyze saan ba mas makakamura ng tax payment yung aking client. Okay? That's tax avoidance. Ang tax evasion is hindi ka nagbabayad ng tax. Tamang tax. Okay? That's tax evasion and it's subject to uh, habulig ko na BIR. Okay? So, yun. Kaya mahirap ang taxation natin. Okay? Kahit ako, hirap na hirap ako sa taxation. Okay? So, next, we have constructive obligations. Do not arise from con mga constructive obligations. For example, hindi talaga nakasaad sa iyong sa iyong tawag din sa iyong sa iyong service na ikaw ay magre-refill ng palamigan um palamig okay sabi mo ganda alam ko may alam uh, alam ko kilala niyo to Ganda, bilhin na ikaw ng palamig, buko, buko pandan, uh, pineapple juice, uh, ano pa ba? orange juice, uh, gulaman. Okay, bilhin ka ng ganda. Tapos, nung naubos mo na yung 10 pesong baso mo, sabi ni ate girl, di ni re-repeal natin. O di re, tuwa ka naman. Kasi sa 10 mo, nagpa-repeal ka, meron ka na uli Okay? Tapos sabi eh, anong gusto mong flavor? Aba, nakapili pa. Noong una, buko panda ng gusto mo. Gusto mong tikman yung ano, yung melon. Anong? Okay? Tapos, bumalik ka na, bumalik, nung bumalik kay ate girl. Ganun at ganun ang ganun ang ginagawa niya. Okay? Ibig sabihin, <laughs> nagkaroon ng constructive, constructive obligation si ate girl na pag inabot mo yung, yung baso mo, i-refillan niya. <laughs> Okay, that's just a, a, no, a simple example of constructive obligation. Parang nasanay na, na impliedly, kahit hindi niya sinasabi, may refill yung, yung, pwede ka magparefill sa kanya. Okay? Ganun, ganun yung negosyo niya. Pwede ka magparefill. Kahit 10 piso lang yung binayad mo, pwede, pwede ka magparefill sa akin. Okay? So, in a serious note, for example, uh, hindi naman nakasaad na may warranty, pero dahil yung negosyo, uh, you know the value of services, of good customer service. Pag, for example, may lumapit sa iyo, nasira yung yung goods na binili from you, bakalpan mo, di kaya naman i repair mo, ganun na naging practice mo. So, constructive obligation siya. Okay? So, yun. Pero mas maganda talaga in writing lahat. Okay? Kamusta naman kayo? Diba? Maka-stress. Na, na, ang aking buhok ko. Oh, grabe. Siguro kung kung tayo ay face-to-face, marami na tayo ng kwentuhang na nun. Okay? So, equity instrument. So, ang, ano naman equity instrument? This is a contract that evidences a residual interest in the assets of an entity after deducting all of the liabilities includes ordinary share capital, preference share, and warrants or option. Okay? We all know that the equity, pinagkaitan siya ng definition, residual interest siya. Okay? Assets minus liabilities equals to equity. So, yung mga equity instruments like ordinary share capital, preference share capital, and warrants and options. Those are the example. Okay? So, ma'am, hindi pa po kami familiar. Okay? Sa corporation topic kasi siya. If sa financial financial accounting one, hindi nyo na-touch yung corporation part. Okay? So, ito yun. Okay. So, yan. So, next we have, ito, compound financial instrument. Paano daw kapag um, parehas merong liability and equity element? Okay? Kung baga, nag, nag-merge siya, okay? nag-hybrid siya, uh, nagkaroon ng financial component financial liability component at equity component in one two in one okay so it's a financial instrument that contains both a liability and equity element from the perspective of the issuer sa perspective na magbibigay okay 
So, common examples include bonds payable, issued with share warrants, and convertible bonds payable. Okay. So, man, bakit may ganyan? Kasi mas attractive siyang tingnan sa part ng investor. Kasi, for example, yung bonds payable issued with share warrants, kumbaga, uutang, ikaw yung issuer, ako yung issuer, ako na lang, ako yung issuer, okay, at ikaw yung aking investor, mas gaganahan kang pagpahiramin ako ng pera kasi may share warrants. Pwede kang maging shareholder ng kumpanya ko. Okay, you have the option to exercise the share warrants. Okay, o di kaya naman convertible bonds payable. Meron kang option na wag bayaran yung ano. Uh, wag, wag ka na lang maningil. Okay, gawin na lang kitang shareholder. Okay, bigyan kita ng convertible bonds payable. Okay, basta pahiramin mo ako ng pera. So, mas, mas attractive siya sa part ng investor. Why? Kasi, naging shareholder ka. Okay? So, kumbaga, marami kasi sa mga, sa mga, in the business world, mas magandang shareholder ka na isang company kasi alam mong lalago. Okay? Kasi, if, pautang ka lang ng pautang, there's a risk na, ah, uh, tawag din There's a risk na, inflation risk, uh, you have, baka maging insolvent yung ano, yung pinagpahiraman mo, o kaya hindi magbayad on time, o kaya maraming dahilan, hirap maningil, galit pa, pag siningil, may mga ganun, wag ganun na, pag sinisingil ng utang, wag magagalit, ikaw umutang, okay? So, um, although maganda din naman ang bumili ng, ng debt securities, okay, as an investor, okay, mas maganda sinasamahan siya ng ano, ng compound financial instrument para two in one, okay? So, um, utang, utang sa'yo, at the same time, yung utang na yun, pwede mo siya i-convert into equity. Okay? So, ganyan siya. Okay? So, yan. Kahit ako, although risky din naman maging shareholder, kasi kagaya ngayong pandemic, diba? Yung mga shareholders, umiiyak na sa mga mahawak. Hindi na talaga umiiyak. Kung baga is, nalulungkot kasi, for example, binili nila yung shares of stock ni Jollibee at 300 pesos nung, nung namamayagpag siya. Pagpatak ng pandemic, naging 140 na lang per share. E, binili mo ng 300. Hindi ka ba iiyak na sana ngayong pandemic ka na lang bumili? Okay? This is the right time and right time to invest in stocks kasi mabababa ang stocks. Ano, kasi sabi nga, paniniwala nga, is, ngayon lang naman yan. Okay? It will rise and it will rise and it will rise again. Kaya, bili lang ng bili ng stocks. Okay? So, yun. I have my, I have students, okay, na meron na silang stocks. Ano, because they heard about, they heard me talking about how to invest in the stock market. So, dahil naman, uh, may kaya, may extra funds, okay, sa halip na uh, bili lang ng bili ng pagkain, ng food panda, ng grab food, okay, they invested in stocks. So, ngayon, mga stockholder na sila ng company. So, I think, namakiyaw sila ngayon ng stocks ni, ng corporations, ng big corporations. So, yun. Baka gusto nyo din. Okay? So, yun. Hindi ako stock, hindi ako stock broker. Okay? I just, I just know the concept of investing in stocks. Okay? So, yeah. So, let's go to accounting for compound instrument. Dami dal dal. Okay? So, for, according to past 32, when accounting for compound financial instrument, you have to do split accounting kasi separate ina-account yung liability and equity component. Okay? So, yung consideration received, nasa loob daw niya kasi yung liability and equity. So, yung total consideration, you have to allocate it sa liability uh, component at sa equity component. So, you have the formula, total consideration received is equal to fair value of the liability plus equity component. So, ma'am, paano kukunin ang equity component? I-derive mo lang yung formula. Ibig sabihin, total consideration received minus the fair value of the liability component is equal to the equity component. Okay? Madali lang siya. So, Okay, we have bonds payable issued with share warrants. Ano ba yung share warrants? These are actually rights, okay, nakasama ng bonds payable wherein pwede mong i-acquire yung uh, shares ng company at a price lower than bentahan sa labas, okay? So, 
at some future time. Okay, specify din yung time kung kailan. Okay, nag expire charot. <laughs> okay, so, um, for example, ang bentahan sa market is nasa 100, uh, 200, okay? Dahil pinahiram mo ako ng pera mo, okay? Pwede mo siyang makuha with your warrants, okay? Pwede mo siyang makuha at 55 pesos sa akin, okay? Yon, parang ganun. Okay, pwede siyang detachable or non-detachable, okay? Uh, paalala lang, dahil kung pang financial instrument to, dalawa talaga yung binenta dito, yung bonds at saka yung share warrants, okay? Then, you have to account for them separately, okay? So, paano? You have issue price of the bonds, okay? Minus the market value of the bonds, X warrant. Ano ba yung X warrant? Big sabihin, wala siyang uh, kasamang share warrant. Yung liability lang talaga, okay? Yung bonds payable lang talaga, okay? is equal to the residual amount of the allocated to warrants. So, that's the equity component, yung value ng warrants. Okay, let's try. Sa example, you have twice co issued 5,000, 10 year bonds, face amount 1,000 per bond at 105. Each bond is accompanied by one warrant that permits the bondholder to purchase 20 equity shares, par 50 at 55 per share or total of 100 shares. 100,000 shares. So, na-compute na siya. Okay, na kung lahat ng 5,000 na 1,000 bonds ay na-exercise or uh, na, oh nga, na-exercise yung share warrants, makakakuha ng 100,000 yung bondholder. 100,000 shares kasi per bond daw is 20. Okay? The market value of the bond, X warrant at the time of insurance is 98. Okay, kapag bond lang daw ay 98 ang bentahan. Okay, you have issue price of the bonds with warrants. Magkano? 5 million. Okay, paano na compute ang 5 million ma? 5,000. Okay, nag-issue ka daw ng 5,000 peso denominated bonds. So, 5,000 times 1,000 pesos is equal to 5 million. Yun talaga yung inuutang mo. Okay? Times 105, 1.05, kasi 105 percent siya. So, you get 5 to 50,000. Okay? Less... Market value of the bond X warrant, sabi, at 98 daw. So, 5 million times 0. 0.98, you get 4.9. Minus mo lang, you get the equity component of 350,000. So, tandaan nyo yan kasi mag-journal entry tayo. How do we record issuance of the bonds? First, you record the amount of cash you receive. Sabi kasi, uh, issued siya at 105. So, 5 million times 1.05, you get 5 to 50,000. Okay? Then, you get a discount on bonds payable. <gasps> Mama, kaya may discount? Eh, mas malaki yung nakuha. Okay? Uh, kasi, ang titingnan mo dito is the, the liability component. Okay? Kung, kung liability lang or the bonds payable lang yung binili, okay, o yung inacquire ng bond holder, okay, valued siya at magkano? x four nine, Okay? four nine lang dapat. Okay, pero dahil may share warrant siya, tumaas yung kanyang uh, value at 105. Okay? So, yun daw kasi yung binta, bentahan ng bonds payable na may share warrant. Okay, pero kung bonds payable at pag bonds payable lang yung titingnan natin, 49 siya. Okay? So, nagkaroon ka ng 100,000 na discount. Bakit? Kasi yung bonds payable mo is 5 million. Okay? Minus yung X warrant na 49, you'll get a discount of 100,000. Kasi, kung tutuusin, yung nautang is four, yung nautang is 5 million. Pero, yung matatanggap mo, kung wala yung warrant, 49 lang. So, may discount na 100,000. Okay? Then, you credit the share warrants outstanding. Okay? Tandaan. Credit balance. Share warrants outstanding, 350,000. Ito yung aabangan mo na ma-exercise. Okay? So, yan nga. What if 60% of the warrants were exercised? So, ano yung 60%? That's 5,000 uh, 5, 1,000 denominated bonds times 20 equity shares. Kasi per bond daw ay 20 equity shares yung makukuha times 60%. Okay? You'll get 60,000 shares. Okay? Ibig sabihin yung 60,000 shares um, bibilin sa'yo. Okay? Kasi na-exercise yung 60% ng share warrants eh. So, magkano? 
55 ang bigay mo. Okay? 60,000 shares times 55, you'll get cash of 3,300,000. So, debit ka ng cash. Now, because na-exercise yung share warrants, tanggalin mo na siya sa share warrants outstanding. Kasi hindi na siya outstanding. Okay? So, we have share warrants outstanding, 60%. Times 350,000. Mamsa nga rin yung 350. Equity ko po. Hindi yun, yun yung value ng ano, share warrants. The 60%. Okay? Then, you'll get 210,000. Yun yung tatanggalin mo sa account ng share warrants outstanding. Okay, kaya nakadebit siya. Then, credit ka. Kasi nad nadagdagan ka ng shareholder. Credit ka ng share capital. Okay? Magkano? Yung biniling share, 60,000 at par value. Okay, so, medyo may introduction na tayo sa corporation. Ang share capital is valued at par value. So, you have 60,000 times 50 par, you get 3 million, less the share premium na, eh, credit ka ng share premium na 510. Paano na compute yung 510? Um, ano tawag doon? Balancing review. Joke lang. So, you'll get, you just add the total consideration received plus yung exercise na share warrants, okay, less the share capital. Eh, parang balancing figure lang, eh. <laughs> okay, so, ganun siya compute in. Total consideration received, plus yung share warrants na exercise, the value of the share warrants exercise, and then less the share capital. You'll get the share premium. <laughs> okay? Next, what if the remaining were not exercised? So, paano pag lumipas yung time, kung kailan ka pwede mo, kung kailan mo pwede exercise yung share warrant. So, ID, tanggalin mo siya sa share warrants outstanding account. So, magkano yung natira? So, 350,000 minus yung exercise na 210, may tira bang 140,000. Okay? Ah, oh my God, bawal siya. Okay? Credit, share premium, an exercise warrants, you have 140,000. So, ibig sabihin mo, napunta siyang share premium. Yes! Napunta siyang share premium. Okay? Yan. What if, hindi sinabi ng problem yung value, market value of X warrant? Anong sabi ng standard? If, hindi mahanap, it cannot be reliably measured yung market value of the X warrant. Okay? or hindi talaga explicitly sinabi, you can use the present values. Okay? The present value. Okay. So, you have twice ko issued 5,000, 10-year bonds, face amount of 10 at 105. Each bond is accompanied by one warrant that permits a bond holder to purchase 20 equity shares, par 50 at 55 per share or a total of 100 shares. Interest is payable annually at a nominal rate of 10 per annum. Effective rate is at 12% for, uh, hindi, hindi na nadagdag. Effective rate is at 12% of, uh, bonds x warrant. Okay? So, yun. Next. Uh, we compute for present values. Okay? So, we have principal. Kasi dalawa yung, yung magiging cash outflow mo. You have yung principal amount and then the interest. Okay? The principal amount is 5 million. Ang PV factor niya is PV of 1 lang. Kasi isang beses mo lang naman siya babayaran at maturity date. So, you got, uh, you'll get effective rate yung gagamitin 1.12 raised to negative 10. Okay? Yun yung, yun yung to get PV of 1. Okay? You get 0 0.3219. Okay? Ang, if I'm not mistaken, 3219 siya. So, round off natin 322. Okay? you get present value of the principal at 160. Excuse me. Excuse me. Okay. The, next, we got interest. So, paano makukuha? The 5 million, the principal times 10%, with the nominal rate, you'll get 500,000 na interest. Okay. Times PV of OA, ordinary annuity of 1. Okay. So, bakit PV of OA? Kasi, repeatedly mo siyang babayaran. Alam naman, repeatedly kang mag-compute. Okay, ng PV of 1. Eh, meron ng madaling uh, go, uh, madaling way, that's PV of ordinary annuity. Okay, so, that's 1.12 raised to negative 12. 1 minus answer divided by 0. 0.12. Alam na, sanay na sanay sa Q. That's 1, that's 1 minus 1.12 raised to negative 
negative 10 divided by 0.12. Okay, mali yung sabi nung una. Okay, that's your PV of ordinary energy. Again, that's 1 minus 1.12. 1 minus 1.12 raised to negative 10 divided by 0.12. Okay, that's how you get the PV of ordinary energy. Ay, ma'am, basic calcule. Okay, I'll just give another, uh, another, how do you Lecture on how to do it's a basic calculator. Okay, so you get the present value of the interest at two eight twenty five thousand. So the total present value is four million four hundred thirty five thousand. You just add the two present values. Okay, so we can now compute for the equity component. So we have issue price of the bonds. We all know that it's five two fifty. Okay, from the previous example, less the present value of the bonds payable at four. Million four hundred thirty-five thousand. Okay, you'll get eight hundred fifteen thousand is the value of your share warrants. Okay. Next, how do we record? So we have cash five two fifty, debit discount on bonds payable na five six five thousand. Paano na compute? That's your five million minus your present value. Okay, na four million four hundred twenty-five thousand. Okay, then credit bonds payable five million. And then credit share warrants outstanding eight hundred fifteen thousand. You na compute natin kanina, okay? Next, so we're done with bonds payable with share warrants. We now do go to another example of compound financial instrument, which is the convertible bonds. Okay, dito naman it gives the holders the right to convert their bond holdings into share capital or other securities of the issuing entity within a specified period of time. This is an example of yung kanina kung sino sabi na sa halip na magbayad ka ng utang, convert mo na lang siya into equity, okay? sa halip na magbayad ka ng utang. Sa halip, o nga, convert mo na lang siya into equity. Tama pala. Okay, sasama. Okay. Okay. When issued at a premium or discount, amortization is up to maturity date instead of conversion date due to unpredictability of the conversion privilege. So, hindi mo kasi alam if i-exercise ba niya o hindi yung conversion privilege. So, ang amortization pa rin ng premium and discount is up to maturity date. Okay. The issue price of the convertible bond shall be allocated between the bonds payable and then the conversion privilege. Alin ang equity component? The conversion privilege. Okay? So, the same pa rin ang accounting niya kagaya sa bonds payable with share warrants. Okay? The, you get the total consideration or the issue price. Okay? Less yung fair value nung liability component. Okay? Makukuha mo ngayon yung equity component. Okay? So, let's try Okay, twice ko issued 5,000 5-year bonds. So, kanina 10. Ngayon, 5-year bonds siya. Face amount of 1,000 per bond at 105. Each bond contains a conversion privilege that provides for an exchange of 1,000 bond for 20 equity shares with par value of 50. Okay? So, it is reliably determined that the bonds would sell only at 98 without the conversion privilege. So, we alam natin kung magkano yung yung fair market value pag walang conversion privilege. Ibig sabihin, madali lang siya. So, you have 5 million times 105, 5,250. Okay? Issue price of the bonds with that conversion privilege at 5 million times 98%. You get 4,9. Man, parang same lang naman. Looks familiar. Oh, kasi binago lang naman natin is yung paano nangyayari itong conversion, convertible bonds. Okay? So, residual amount allocated to the conversion, you have 350,000. That is um, the equity component. How do we account? The same then with uh, bonds payable with share warrants. Okay? Ganun din, debit cash, debit discount. Pagkuha niya is yung um, market value without the conversion privilege. That's your liability component. Less the face, uh, face amount minus the fair value of the liability component without conversion privilege. And then, ang bago lang sa kanya is debit Oh, uh, credit bonds payable 5 million alam na natin yun credit share premium okay conversion privilege okay the equity component is charged uh, is credited to the share premium okay lalagyan mo siya ng title share premium conversion privilege why? kasi paano kapag na-convert yung uh, 
pag na-convert yung bonds, okay, a certain amount of bonds, hindi full, partial lang, okay, na-convert siya into equity. Eh, ang ginawa mo, nilagay mo siya sa buong share, pero may walang label, eh, di pandali ka ng, ano, ng buklat, ng transactions, kung magkano ba yung original niya. Mas maganda na meron ng, meron na nakahanda siyang sariling share premium, okay? It's the same with treasury shares. Ano, para hindi ka pandali dyan ng, ng compute, it saves you time and effort. Okay? Okay, so, anyway. So, more of the problem solving, okay, regarding compound financial instruments sa guided exercises. Okay, guys. Bye-bye. See you.